Trojan family, Trojan gang. Fight on forever's in the building. And today, we finna talk about this USC gang, man. And I'm happy and I'm mad at the same time. I'm happy and I'm mad at the same time. What was that in the first half, USC? Right? What was that in the first half, USC? We can't be coming out like that. Against a team with an offense with a heartbeat, we probably can't come back from this game. Coming out like that forced us to be perfect in the second half. But I would say this is a second half team and the coaches is elite. They can make adjustments and the players can adjust too. And they keep their head up, they play hard. I like the attitude of the team, I could say that. But our offensive line is our Achilles heel. Offensive line is our Keeley heel. Soon as we face lit defensive linemen, it's a struggle. We're going to have to win some defensive type games. Because some games our offenses ain't going to be able to put up 30 points. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. Right? But I like that it kind of do force us to be methodical. I like the methodicalness where we got we have long drives. Right? We had, what, 80 plays this game, even with the three turnovers. Still had 80 plays. We chunking, we we, we, we we chipping at the defense until we hit one of our Megatron receivers, Deuce Robinson or Jacoby Lane, one-on-one, right? But the offensive line have to do better. I don't know what I could, you gotta judge this team on the curve. How good is USC? Depending on how the offensive line performs. Now we four games into the season in the offensive line and looking that great. When we get to seven to eight games in the season, if they still looking like that, I mean, then that's what we got. It's still time for the offensive line to prove they still young. I feel like they still can be coached better, but we should have been able to run at ease on them. Woody Marks had 19 carries for only 63 yards, only averaged 3.3 yards a carry. Now Quentin Joyner, I feel like Quentin Joyner he has a little better vision, right? And he fit more uh, fitted behind his offensive line, I think. I, we got to get Jordan some more carries. Woody had 19. Jordan only had six. That's 25 carries out the main back, right? Then you have Brian Jackson with four. It's like 29 carries out the running back. Woody Marsh got to get, I mean, Quinn Jordan got to get more than six. I say he at least, at least need 11. At least like five more runs for the kid because he was averaging 8.2 yards a pop. And Jacoby doing doing this thing, you know, 10 catches, 105, two touchdowns. Red zone nightmare, mismatch nightmare. Jacoby Lane is a top 10 receiver in college football. Hands down, period. He's our next Dwayne Jarrett, uh, Drake London type dude, right? Unstoppable. Uh, Zachariah. Uh, chipped in four receptions, 44 yards. Man, I want to say something about Zach. Y'all tripping on Zach. I've been hearing a lot of people talking about they they down on Zach right now. Y'all are tripping. Now, he ain't a Tyreek Hill. He do look like he ain't as fast as he is was last year. Got to be some type of linger injury. We don't know. Trust me, because he do look like he can't get to that sixth gear no more. Like, he ain't as explosive. But y'all tripping if y'all down on this kid talking about move him out of receiver. Y'all tripping. I seen the touchdown against LSU. He had Miller Moss dismissed him over through. I seen the touchdown against Michigan. Miller Moss had missed him, overthrew, right? So Miller Moss, I don't know if he ain't got enough arm for, he ain't got that chemistry with Zach, right? He don't know how to put it right on the money with Zach. Cause Zach will have three touchdowns this year and Miller Moss hit him. So Zach has got open this offense, Lincoln Riley then called plays and Zach then got open and executed these plays. Miller Moss dismissed the throw. Why do you think they still got Zach in there and still trying to go at him? Because when they go back and watch the tape, they see, okay, Zach was open, Miller dismissed him. They watching every snap. So we only seeing the plays that Zach is not making, right? But the coaches are seeing the plays that he is making, but Miller Moss ain't connecting with him. Right, they gotta get their co co cohesion together. Y'all don't give up on Zachary Banks. Boy, please, y'all tripping. USC fans, y'all so quick to turn on a player, especially a player that was so electric and show us what he could do. He ain't forgot how to play football. 
Is this, a, is this a connection thing? And I do think his confidence down. He thinking you can tell on the punt returns. He has looked shaky on the special teams. So him looking shaky on the special teams and his and it's not going his way in the passing game. We feel like Jack Ryan being trash. But I watched the game. Like we would be talking different if he got hit for the touchdowns against LSU and Michigan, right? And the one where. They intercepted it this game. That probably wouldn't have been a touchdown, but for sure he was under throw. For sure he had a step on a receiver. Oh, you, oh, Zachariah let him intercept it. Well, it's hard when you run at full speed and you got your man beat and the ball's under throw. He got a better chance of getting it because first of all, you running at a, at a faster speed and you ahead of him. So now he in between you and the ball. So it's hard for him to challenge 50 50 balls when he going deep and he got that vanishing speed it's different when you six five six six you know it's gonna be 50 50 you know that you're gonna be in the cornerback pocket you know it probably gonna be a jump ball zachariah is like i'm putting on the burners laying out this should be catch and run i shouldn't have to run jump and catch when I got this speed. But Miller Moss is throwing to Zachariah like he's a possession receiver when he need to throw the ball out in front. And he does try to sometimes, but when he does that, he overthrows him, right? The Michigan game and the LSU, especially the Michigan game. Zach wide open for a touchdown. Miller Moss just overthrew him by like two, three yards. But it's probably hard for Miller because he's so used to throwing to Jacoby who's 6'5". Deuce who's 6'6", uh, Cal Ford who like 6'3", um, Kyron Hudson like 6'2". Um, Zachariah, catch radius ain't as large, but you gotta lead him with your speed, right? And he be trying to do it, but he overthrow it. So I'm saying they gotta get their chemistry together. But this is all about the, 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 the tackles, right? Paige Murphy not calling them out. I ain't trying to call nobody out. But we just gotta do better. And the thing about Paige and Murphy is that they have some plays where they do look elite. Like sometimes you, you see them be like, that's right, good shit. And the other times it's like, man, it's inconsistency. And as an offensive line, that's that's the unit that need the most consistency. Cause one inconsistent play can result in a quarterback sack, which result results in a fumble, like we seen, uh uh uh, uh, uh a sack for loss, right? Put you behind the chains, basically forcing you to punt, killing your drive, a run for loss, right? Killing your drive or letting them letting the defense making you one dimensional. Now it's second and twenty, right? So it's the consistency and then even when we don't give up a sack, give up a tackle for loss, we ain't really gouging. It's like two yard, three. We ain't getting that push, that oomph. They look a little snow off the snap. Like what's going on? What's going on? So this offensive line is what's gonna determine the future of this team, right? And then my boy EG, what happened with EG, y'all? I see he came off the field. I heard it was something about his neck and then they carted him off but he walked off the field he took his helmet off he didn't look that hurt you know what i'm saying but i guess when there's neck injuries if you feel any little thing in the neck they taking you off right i guess they want to get x-rays hopefully it's not nothing serious because eg to me has been our best player period right Best pair of period. So it was a tell of second halves. The first half, we actually came out strong in the um in the first quarter. Right? We actually came out strong. Went down the field um and, and got the drive, right? Came out right off bat. Miller Moss complete the ball to Jacoby for 14. You know what I'm saying? We got an incomplete, then Woody Marks, then he ran for three, right? Then we got another Woody Marks, you know. And then we just start moving the ball. We move the ball. We got a four for one. Randy, right, for five yards, first down. And we just went down the field and scored. But after that, we gave up the touchdown, right? Wisconsin, get them credit. You know, they that's where they had that little hitch move. That's where uh, Jacoby got beat deep. Get them credit for that. You know, we, we had them one-on-one -on, -one on the island. They took their shot and got it. Next possession... Seven plays, 34 yards, punt. Defense held our back. We forced him to punt again. 
then that's when we do the interception. Defense hold us down again, though. Right? And then they get a touchdown. So it's like, we got to come out better. We got to come out better. Then we fumbled it. So we had to enter. After the touchdown, we got a punt, interception. Then we got a field goal. Then we got a fumble. Right? So we coming out late. Right? And then we came out early but late. So what is it with the first half with the Trojans? Is it because is it the coaches? Do our coaches is is they better in game adjusters than pre game? Right? That's my question. Is they better at in game adjustments than pre game? Because even in the LSU game, we came out slow. They really get going to late in the second quarter. Right? The defense came out right. Had that fourth um had that fourth down stop. You know, but the offense consistently every game, even against Utah, we kind of came out. So Link got to do a better job at preparing the team from the gate. They great in the locker room, man. They great after they've been out on the field and seen the other team and seen, they great after seeing us against our opponent. The coaches, we need to get better at projecting how our players gonna look against the opponent. Right? It seems like we come in the game and we have this certain game plan, but it's not working. Right? For the offense, it's not working, it's not clicking. Then in the second half, it's working and clicking, and we like, why we didn't come out like that in the first place. You hear me? You hear me? And and I can't lie, it's because of the offensive line been struggling. But I think Lincoln Rodney gotta start booking it now. Like, okay, our offensive line will be ups and downs. It's going to give us struggles. Let me prepare for that. You see how the second half, they ran more screens. They probably ran like four screen plays to Woody Marks just to get that get that off, that defensive line from this, uh, you know what I'm saying, pinning their ears back and going. That's what we going to have to do, right? Woody Marks going to have to catch five or six passes a game off screens. Right, if that's what we got to do to stop the defense alignment from this shredding our offensive line. Now, eventually teams gonna adjust to that, and linebackers and safeties gonna be coming downhill, making plays on the screen play. But at least it's not our quarterback getting ripped to shreds or us taking a four or five yard loss. Okay, you stop our little screen pass for a two, three yard, four yard gain. That's cool. We'll take that three, four yards. That's better than a loss. Our quarterback getting hit. That's better than second and 10 or our second and 13, right? So we're going to see a lot of more screens. So Lincoln Riley, get creative with the screens. Like start drawing them some creative screens because because 10 is going to have, they're going to start seeing that and scheming for that too, right? But we got to do it because until the offensive line get theirs together because they could have blew this game for us. They could have blew this game for us, right? They could have blew this game just like the Michigan game, right? Came out rugged, could, couldn't come back. Luckily, we was able to come back at home. But my only question, look, every other unit on this team is good, right? Our offense line is probably tier three right now, right? Quarterback, hey, Miller Moss, he ain't his mobile, but you give him, you give Miller Moss time, he tier one. Our wide receivers is definitely tier one with Jacoby and Deuce. They're tier one. Defensive line. I say our defensive line is at least tier two. Right? Our defensive line is at least tier two. Our linebackers fully healthy. I feel like it's tier one. Eric Gentry, a tier one dude. Masquerina's Arnold, Arnold is a tier one dude. So our linebacker core is at least a tier one and a half, right? And our DBs had the uh, uh, the ability, they, they like tier one and a half too, because Kamari Ramsey is a tier one. Jalen Smith is a tier one, right? Um, the Carlos Nicholson is a tier two. Jacoby a tier two, so our only tier that's, that's three or lower is the offensive line that's hurting us. But that's what I love about football. 
That's what I love about football, right? Is that you need every unit coexisting or the better teams gonna take advantage. Like if this was Penn State or a top 10 team, we lose this game with them three turnovers in the first half. We're not shutting out a top 10 team in the second half, right? And we're not getting off 80 plays against them each <laughs> like this game. Now we could get in the, in the, uh, the uh, high 60s, low 70s, but I don't, we ain't getting off 84 plays against top 10 teams, right? So I shot out the defense locking up second half. That's what we supposed to do with a quarterback that ain't able, right? So just like Michigan, we locked them down the second half into that last drive where they ran and ran the ball right down our throat, right? So Deontay Lynn made great adjustments. He, he basically almost pitches shutouts. So it seemed like Trojan fans, if we could get off to, to good starts, if, if we could be leading at the half or tied at the half, right? We was tied with LSU, we won that game. We was down 11 by Michigan and we was down 11 by Wisconsin. And we could just play even in the first half. We got the second half. Like with these adjustments, unless it's just a huge talent gap, unless we facing a team that is on another level than us, we win in the second half. That's what I can say. What I can say for sure, our offensive line is a weakness. Right? That's what I can say for sure. But what I can say for sure is our second half adjustments, if we, we win in sec we win in the second half. Right? Unless you Georgia, Alabama, Texas, you know what I'm saying? Ohio State. We win in the second half for sure. We win in the second half for sure. So we got to be focused on weathering the storm with this offensive line because even how bad the offensive line is, it do seem to get better in the second half, even though I know the play calling changes up. So Lincoln Riley got to come with the, the, that second half game plan, right? That's catering towards the weakness of the offensive line. Let me mix it up a little more. Let me run it a little more because if the offensive line is struggling, they got a better chance of getting their confidence and making a play on a run play instead of a pass play. Because pass play, you dealing with mostly speed and agility. And a 300 pound man don't want to have to deal with speed and agility every snap. A 300 pound man want to lean on the defense, want to put their weight on them, right? So we got to come out the same way in the first half. Can't abandon the run for nothing. Offensive line have to play better. We have to throw in the screens. We have to have the other team defensive line thinking. Screen plays, uh, counters, um, unconventional stuff where it's, it's a mental game. Right now in the first half it'd be a physical game. You know, they beating our tackles. They beating our tackles off the edges. It's a race to the quarterback. It's like, what is Josh Henson doing? Like, is we taking the wrong angles or we ain't got the foot speed? Then I see, we coming out, I see we trying to chip. I see we got running back chipping, help, helping to tackle, tight end chipping, helping to tackle. So I know this game, we was playing a little bit more like, let's help the offensive line, but we got to majorly help the offensive line. And that start with the play calling. Throw them off. But I would say this, like I said, the offensive line do get better in the second half of the game. So that gives me hope that the offensive line could get better in the second half of the season. And if we could get our offensive line better by the second half in the season, then we could be dangerous. Now, this is not a hopeless situation, y'all. With the offensive line, I'm telling y'all, it can get better. They do have the talent. They can get better. They have the potential to get better. And I think they could play better. They're young. Paige, Noah, these guys are young, right? So I feel like if we can hang on, right? Hang on. Be there at the end of the season. I 
feel like our offensive line is going to be better than what it is now. It's not a hopeless situation like our defense was with Grinch. Y'all, how our defense was with Grinch, it was no help in that. It was no help in that. But with this team and this offensive line, it's a chance that that can improve. I see it in the second half. Every game, they just need to come out like that. So what y'all think, Trojan fans, about this victory? 38-21. We dominated the second half. 28 nothing. Do y'all think our offensive line can improve? And just a little, be a little bit better. Right now, they got an F grade, y'all. I can't lie. Right now, the offensive line got an F grade. But I think they could get up to a C minus. If they can get up to a C minus Trojan, we still rocking and rolling, and we still have reason to be excited about this season because the defense is legit. We can't trip off the 21 points in the first half because we had three turnovers, right? That punt fumble by Zachariah, that basically gave them seven points, right? It's really a 14-point game by our defense without all the turnovers. And to tell you the truth, without the fumble, without the three turnovers, I think they only score seven points, to be honest. Because what drive did they score where it wasn't a turnover? Right? You know what I'm saying? So our defense is legit and, and really did what it's supposed to do against a team like this. It just didn't look like it because all the turnovers. I seen I seen two plays I didn't like. I seen two plays where the defensive line just got whooped, blew off the ball, but it stopped. That wasn't consistent. I only seen that like once, twice in the first half. Second half, them boys manned up. Maybe it's some early starts. You know, we ain't used to these 12, 30 starts. You know, we used to the late starts. That's what I think it probably is. Like, we was in Michigan, early start. We ain't used to that. We've been in the Pac-12 after dark all these years. You know what I'm saying? At home, Coliseum, early start. We ain't used to that. So we got to start getting acclimated. We got to get our bodies on East Coast time, y'all. <laughs> like our players got to get their body on East Coast time. They're going to have to start going to sleep three hours early or something instead of going to sleep at, at 11, 10 o'clock. They need to be going to sleep at 6 and 7 for the rest of the season. You hear me? Because we got to get our bodies on that East Coast time because I feel like that could be part of a reason for our slow starts. Because in these last two games, we have looked like a totally different team than we did in the first half. Look at the first half against Michigan and Wisconsin. We look garbo. Look at the second half of Michigan and Wisconsin and we look elite. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We look like an elite team that just need to get their offensive line together. But until then, man, it's your boy Carter Sports. It's Trojan City. It's SC. So let's go.